chance for us to give him a little bit of uh, feedback on on the season and personal development and individual development and all that. And it's not real in depth because we do it every day here. I, I try to talk to the players throughout the year, whether it's just a couple of words here and there or interacting with them in the breakfast room or or uh, after the game, a little bit of feedback or words of encouragement. That goes on all year and they talk to the coach every day or coaches every day. So it's not like we uh, get together this one time after the season and talk. It's more of a thank you and and um, that's so that's about it. Yeah, obviously, you know, if they have any any feedback for us, how we can be better at what we do, and as an organization, we'll always listen and take take in suggestions, and and um, you know, the, the door is open for that all year too. Yarmo, some people might perceive this off season to be more busy for the organization, just because you have quite a few UFAs. Do you view this off season as more busy than any other? And and what are your priorities going into it? I I don't think it's going to be any more busy than than you have UFAs, you have RFAs every year. Um, it's it's important decisions that we have to make. And and the one thing that I want to make clear is that that our ownership has always been great about. Um, and supportive about whatever we need to do to keep the team competitive, get it to the next level. They've always been supportive of it. So none of these decisions are going to be a question of whether we want to spend the money to make our team better or not. They've always been willing to do that, supportive of our plans, whether it meant spending more money. Obviously, we're going to have to fit it under the cap, um, look at the options we have uh, from within our system with the players that we think that are going to be a big part of our future um, from young players, players developing into what we think could be full-time NHLers next year um, versus players that we could get from guys that are becoming a UFA or are UFAs that could be available from somewhere else and and those are the uh, the decisions that we're going to get into right now and and uh, but I've said it all along too that I believe that whatever happens with our pending UFAs, we're going to have a really good team after July 1 here too. We have a very strong core in place that are all going to be here for a, for a long time. Um, our, I think that with with the uh, performances from some of the defensemen that we saw later in this in the year, with the opportunity that opened because of unfortunate injuries, we saw that we have. Uh, great depth on our D for going into next year, all players under contract, uh, except Zach is a, is a restricted free agent, but I'm sure we'll, we'll come to an agreement. So I don't know who has a better decor than we do. Um, you know, we have talented goalies in our system if, if Bobrovsky decides to move on. Um, and we have a really strong uh, forward group as well. And, and all of them are growing too. Pierre Luc Dubois, I don't know, can't have a beer yet legally. So there's a lot, a lot of uh, room for improvement there. Um, you look at Oliver Bierstrand, what he did towards the end of the year, the pace he was scoring goals in the in the last 40 games. Now do that for the 82 games, and we're going to have a heck of a player in him. And and that's what we've always believed in him. You know, we haven't seen him in in junior and and in Cleveland when they won the championship before he got to the NHL level. He was. One of the best junior players I've ever seen in my years of scouting, getting 60 goals, over 60 goals in his best year and, and uh, winning the championship in Cleveland, scoring all those winning goals in the most important games. Now he's doing it in the NHL level and, and he, he's going to get better. He's going to get stronger. He's going to get better. Um, you know, our, our leaders are Nicky and, and Boo and they're not old yet. Cam's not. Cam's still improving every year. He's, he's getting to another level every year. and. Uh, we have a lot of a lot of positives going for our team. The Texiers, the Bemstrom, those guys are going to get a great opportunity to play a key role in our, our forward group next year. Bemstrom's the youngest guy to win the scoring in the Swedish league ever. And you can look at the names that have come from that league to become great NHL players. He had 23 goals as a 19-year-old. He's going to get a great opportunity here to uh, to um, not only play but but play. Big role and 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 be a be a goal scorer on this level that he was in the Swiss League, and you all saw Texier the glimpses of his talent. He's gonna get better. He's gonna have a great summer and get stronger and gonna be a, a, you know one of the top prospects that we've had in, in the recent years. 
the way he was able to come into the uh, the playoffs in the NHL in the in the uh, hardest games of the year. So there are so many so many great things going on. Josh Anderson, what a beast, and uh, he's just going to keep getting better. He's he's uh, he's a force, and no reason why he shouldn't get better for next year. He scored 27 goals, I think, this year in the regular season, and and and. Uh, you better be looking when he's coming to forecheck and where he's coming from. And he's going to get stronger. He's going to get faster. And so there are a lot of exciting things going on about our team. And, and I'm not worried about uh, the UFAs. I'm not. Did you meet with all the players today? You had a chance to meet with all of them? Yeah, there were a couple of guys that were out of town because of uh, various reasons. for, for But they will meet with them at a later date. But just, just a couple we, we met, I think with everybody except a couple guys today. You had said last or a couple nights ago that uh, you, you would at least have a kind of a feeling of, with, with some of those UFAs after the exit interviews. Did you at least get the kind of read that you thought as far as some kind of feedback one way or the other from those players? Yeah, but uh, that's not something that I'm going to discuss in this No, form. no, no, I wasn't. But, um, you know, yeah, we have our thoughts and our, our, our what we think they might do or we might be right about that. We might be wrong. Time will tell, and, and uh, you know they're going to do their business due diligence or whatever the decision-making process they have is, and then then we'll talk if needed. And if not, it's uh, thank you for everything and and good luck. The one guy that Duchesne was in here earlier, and he spoke, and he said that he definitely planned to talk to you guys before free agency. Now, whether that means he it also sounds like he may be willing to listen to everybody. I just want to get your thoughts on what he brought to you when he was in here and how receptive d does he at least seem initially to listening to what you guys, the vision you guys have for next season? Yeah, we've, we've talked to him about our vision and our plans and, and, and all of that several times. And, and uh, you know, uh, time will tell what his, what his plans are and we'll find out about them. Um, as I said to him when we traded for him, I said we're fine with accepting the risk that he might just be a rental, and if that's the case, then that's the case. But but uh, you know he he brought a lot of those things that we thought he would bring. Uh, he's a skilled player. He's great in the faceoffs. Good power, power play player for us. Can can create offense by by you know, beating people one on one and and uh, the making plays, scoring goals. And he, there was a lot a lot of positives about him, and. Um, future will tell where it goes but um, you know we were happy with his performance and, and he was a good player for us and he was a good teammate too it may be the same question but was there some finality to your discussion with Brett or Bob I'm not going to get into those are private conversations that we have and, and they've been great soldiers for us and we thank him for everything they've done and and uh, you know we'd love to have him back that's what I've said from last summer and that's what I'll say again and and um, you know it takes two two parts to two parties to uh, to agree on a contract and and, and the future together and and um, time will tell. As a guy who's put together uh, winning rosters in Finland for two different teams here, uh, getting back to your defensive core, how important is that to have the kind of depth when you look at it on paper that you guys appear to have right now going forward? If you're just going to put together a roster that's going to win, it's huge. I, I don't think we missed a beat by by uh, Kukan becoming a full full time player in the top six for us. Almost, uh, you know, on the contrary, and this is no disrespect to anybody who was playing before. I thought Ryan Murray was playing his best hockey when he got injured. He was awesome for us, but Dean Kukan was was great. He, he brought in an element with his skating and ability to skate the puck out of the zone, D zone to uh, to uh, ability to join the rushes and. And I, I told him today that where where was that bomb hiding that he scored on with in in Boston? I mean, just don't don't be afraid to use it more often. That was one heck of a shot, and, and to beat to Karask with that, and you, you saw how good he played all series. And no no goalie in the world is going to stop that shot from where he took it, and how how hard he, he hit the uh, hit the spot. And um, you know, but I I think that uh, our success in the playoffs in both series. Whether you consider the the Bruins series a success or not was was uh, you know, we were missing Nutivara and, and Murray and and McQuaid and a lot of people would say that if you miss three out of your top six that you got no chance. But Kukan stepped right in and played great. Harrington took a bigger role. 
played played great, and Adam Clendenning was was very good for for you know the uh, limited role that he played in, but there was no fear in his play. He played with great confidence with the puck and made some good plays, and and was very dependable for a guy that was you know a little bit down on our depth chart and played most of the year in Cleveland. I thought he had a great season in Cleveland. I had a couple of conversations with him during the year that just keeps stay with it, stay with it, because he was playing so well in the in the minors that every game that I saw there, he kind of stuck out that he's, 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 a, he's at a level above the American League, regular American League defenseman. You could tell that he had potential to play on a higher level uh, pretty much every game that I watched uh, in Cleveland this year. And, and finally, he gets a chance in the uh, the most fun part of the year, and he did great with it. And, but I, I thought that that, that was a, you know, it's, it, it, you never know until you see him in a, in a game and a, a big game like that how they're going to do. Uh, but um, those were a huge part of our success here, um, as far as we got. And then obviously Gavrikov, uh, you know, we've we've thought that he's. Uh, I've said this before in our internal conversations that I think he could have played for us all year this year and, and, and in our top six and I think that you know his, and he can step into the playoff games and play like that he probably could have played for us all year and um, be a part of it be a big part of it and I, I am excited about his potential and really happy that he's, he's on our team next year and everybody's still going to have to earn their ice time from, from our coaches I'm not ever given that away and that's always part of my speech with the players is that I can trust in them and give them a contract and sign it and and have them on our roster then that's that's as far as I go I I nudge like towards calls I nudge them every once in a while with the decisions on ice time and and, uh, and the uh, lineup but you know I'll leave it up to him to how, how much he wants to play those guys and you have to earn your ice time from him and but Gavrikov was uh, went into the most important games of the year and looked as confident as he had played in the league for five years. One more follow-up. Uh, sticking with defense, did you see, Zach, I guess, Zach Wierenski and, uh, and Seth Jones uh, take it to another level in the playoffs that maybe, you know, well, if I'm sure you thought they probably had it in the next did they take it to another level in this playoffs? Just yeah, yeah, I think so. I, I think they're both... Um, huge part of our success in the future. They're so young. Zach's, what, 21? And Seth's 24. <laughs> I'd say they seem like they've been here forever already. And, and such veterans, and they're just getting started. I mean, there's so much room for improvement there still, and it's, that's the most exciting part. I can't emphasize that enough, that how much more potential there is, even though they are at such a high level already. No reason why they can't both keep getting stronger, quicker, faster, um, you know, more experienced, knowing what these situations require to, to, to win a series like we had against Boston. And uh, I thought Zach um, was, was uh, excellent in the uh, most important games in the regular season that sort of decided our, our uh, or clinched our spot into the playoffs and then in the playoffs as well. And Seth Seth said, Three times All Star in a row in the league, so you know you come to expect that from him every night now. But um, you know, it's pretty exciting to have a, have a D, D pair like that. And you're leading, leading your D core. Yarmo, um, I know you're confident in the future of the organization, regardless of what happens with your UFAs. But there was a, a price that you paid at the trade deadline to acquire guys, and a price that you pay by not trading guys that you could have gotten something for. Seeing now what you did in the postseason, was that price worth it for, in terms of what the organization got, invaluable experience, and in terms of building a fan base? Yeah, you always hope that when you spend spend uh, something on, on guys that could be rentals that you go all the way. So obviously it's disappointing that we didn't. We thought that we had a team that could compete with anybody. I think we showed that we had a team that could compete with anybody. I think we played the uh, probably the two best teams in the regular season in the whole NHL in the first two rounds couldn't get past the second one um, and uh, now we got to get back to work on getting some more picks and and uh, you know every time we're going to miss it an opportunity to try to pick a player that may or may not become an NHL player we're going to probably grind our teeth a little bit but um, you know, we, we uh, wanted to give this group the best 
possible chance we could to uh, to win the cup, and that was the reason behind the philosophy. and And uh, we had great support from everybody in the organization, from top top to the bottom of, of you know why we were doing this, and and and, uh, and that's why we went for it. And and uh, it was exciting, and I'm I'm just sad that it ended too soon, but. Uh, I said it before that I'd do it again in a second. We believed in this group, and um, I think we proved that they were, they earned it, and they were definitely worth it. Yarmo, it's it's neat to see some of the younger guys like get a shot late in the season and then catch on for a cup run. You talked about Gavrikov, but Tex as well. I was wondering just how valuable that is for him to play and then get to go back for another run in the AHL. And just if you could evaluate him and what you saw from from that player, and then going into the future, some of those players that, that you consider the next wave coming in. Well, I think it was it was great the way he got onto our team because he had a great season in Finland, and then uh, we went to the uh, went to Cleveland, played in the American League for seven games, and was outstanding in those seven games. So it wasn't like we're giving him a shot at sort of a flyer. Let's see what he can do. He went to the American League and played unbelievable and earned his call up. Everybody was screaming from there um, and everybody from our organization who saw him that he's ready to play. He's, he's ready for an NHL opportunity. And then he came over here and played really good to uh, regular season games, played some great games against Tampa. And then, uh, you know, I think he probably learned a little bit from Boston series that it gets hotter as you, as you go on. And, and it was a diff di different type of series. It was more physical and, and he's 19 years old, so he need, he knows he needs to get stronger. He and and uh, the one thing about that uh, kid is that he has very good self-assessment. I think he he has realized now. I haven't. He's going to the world, so I haven't had a chance to talk to him yet. Um, but I, I am 100% convinced that he knows exactly what he needs to do to um, to be a full-time NHL player next year and have a, have a good season for us. And um, you know, one thing for sure is that he has to get stronger. The the battle level the, in the NHL is different from European hockey. It's different from the AHL. It's different from regular season in the playoffs, and it's different against the top teams in the league. So, um, in order to get there, he's going to have to get stronger. But I'm I'm sure he'll get right to work when his season's over. Where is the organization with Alexander Wenberg right now? It seems like in each of the last two seasons he's taken take a step backwards. Um, is this a huge off season for him as far as proving something to, to the coaching staff and the management where he is? You guys obviously, he got an extension. What does he need? What do you need to see out of him to get him back playing close to the level he was at in the 16 17 season? Yeah, we, we had some hard conversations with him today about it, and, and, and he, he's got a lot of pride. So I, I, I think that he's gonna he's gonna do that self assessment as well and get to work in the off season. I, I think that um, you know in the NHL, in order to score and, and be an offensive player, that he he was a good sixty point guy for us two years ago. You have to get more to the inside. And uh, he, I think he's probably played a little bit too much outside. And he relies on his playmaking skills. He's, he's got good vision, but in order to score, you have to get get more inside. And he's got a good shot. And, and um, you know, he's. I don't think he's lost any of his ability anywhere. He's, his confidence level is probably not where it has been before. Um, so, you know, so much of the pro sports is 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 up there with your confidence and and. Um, that's that's something he's going to have to figure out. I, I, we still believe he has that ability that he has to had two years ago, and even in the, all the struggles um, with his offensive game, he's he's a very good defensive player for us. But obviously, we want both. You know, it's 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 definitely uh, something that we want and require from him is is to be good at both ends of the ice. He is good penalty killer for us. He's very reliable defensively. He got much better in the faceoffs this year, but the the offensive part is, is is not there with the way he played this year, and he's going to have to figure it out to get back to that level where he was before. This is a franchise that went further than ever went before, and yet from players on down, everybody seems not satisfied with the fact that it ended so quickly. Do you, how proud are you, though, of that culture of winning that you've built to where that isn't the standard and, and you feel like you've, you've built something here that can even go further than that as you go forward? Well, I've, I've talked about it all along, that, that uh, you know, 
why be in the NHL if your goal is not to win the Stanley Cup? I mean, that's that's the only trophy that's really worth worth for for teams worth competing for. I don't think any team is happy after even if they win the President's Trophy or go out in the first or second round. Who cares? I'm pretty sure that they would all say the same thing. It's the Stanley Cup that everybody wants to wants to uh, win, and until you do that, you're going to keep working at it. And, and the first round win is, is not not good enough. Second round win is not good enough. And I've said that when people were challenging us about you never won a round, you never won a round. I said, it's not going to be any different level of disappointment if you win one round, win two rounds or three rounds if you come up short and not win the Stanley Cup. So I think that's what we're going to learn. You know, Before it was, oh, you're disappointed, you lost in the first round. Like now it's we're just as disappointed, if not more, probably more disappointed now that we lost in the second round because we thought we could go all the way. And there's going to be maybe time before we win it that we could go three rounds and we'll lose it in the final. And it's going to be even more disappointing once you get the taste of it a little bit. You know, you start feeling that this, this could be within the grasp of your fingers there and, and then you don't get to do it and you don't get to uh, celebrate it. Um, so... Until you get there, it's always going to be disappointing, and I, I think that everybody who's won it is going to tell you that uh, that the closer you get to it, the more disappointed you are if you don't get it. Yarmo, first quickly, are you able to share the details of Adam McQuaid's injury? No, I don't really want to get into that because it's it's such a personal matter, and, and guys are you know if they want to talk about him themselves, I mean we're not trying to hide anything. I'm more more than anything trying to be respectful of their their you know personal issues and, and but it was it was a, I don't think he was going to come back at any time even if we went all the way in the playoffs so it was a severe enough injury that would have kept him out all year uh, second question to the culture point we were talking with torts today just about the total and complete honesty that has become part of this culture and he credited you as having that as well why is that so important and what value does that bring to building a successful team well, I say always about you know guys that may, may have some conflicts with torts along the way that, that later on, if not now, you're going to always appreciate hearing it from him right face to face rather than him telling you something else face to face and then you hear it from behind your back that he said something totally different. And, and I'm a true believer in that. And, and um, that's why you have to have the courage to always tell whatever needs to be told to the guys face to face. and. And if you don't have the courage to say it face to face, then don't say it at all. And um, you know that that that's something that's not negotiable in our organization or in our values. That's just something that we require from everybody. And and um, that's it. Great. How close was the Riley Nash at the end of the year before the injury to the Riley Nash that you that you signed? Did he show this enough to you that uh, you know made you made that signing worth it to you? Yeah, he's, uh, you know, you know what, I had a conversation with him along the way where he was, uh, you know, struggling and hadn't scored and, and I just, I just thought he handled himself so well uh, professionally as yes, he's such a good pro. I, I'm sure he, he was disappointed he, and he, and through his struggles and, and angry or whatever you could ask him, but, but he never dragged his lip. He was never unhappy as far as, you know, being a distraction um, among the or in the locker room. He always handled himself like a true pro. And that's really important, you know, when you go through your personal struggles to have, be able to handle handle yourself that, that way. I have a lot of respect for guys like that. And I told him that, that I appreciate it. And, and I thanked him for it. And um, towards the end of the season, he got rewarded for his hard work. He, he scored some big goals for us. He was always a very solid player defensively for us, even with his struggles offensively. Um, he had scored 40 points the year before, so you know I'm sure he, he was he was feeling the heat of that and and not being able to score. But he broke broke through at the end. And, and but more more than anything, I respect the way he handled himself as a teammate through all his struggles and how professionally he. He went through the whole thing, and, and I think that he made believers of, of the coaching staff in his ability to be a, a player, a key player for us in the uh, in the most important uh, games of the year. And, and so that's a great way to uh, sort of build a bridge from this season to the next and, and uh, starts from scratch. 
there's some satisfaction, though, in the fact that you raised the bar. Since you've been here, it's kind of been a little steady climb. In other words, you don't start next year down here. You started up here. It's like what Nick said about the mandate is now here. It's not making. It's well. The expectations always go up when you're when you're having success. Then then you know, the expectations are higher, and and you know we've struggled with them along the way a little bit. Sometimes when we had the expectations there, we were maybe weren't ready for them. I think now we're going to be ready to have the higher expectations for our team and and for our organization, for the franchise. And, and uh, you know, I think we gained respect around the league for, for the way we played. And uh, that's been another thing that we've been, we've been working on, is to, to gain that respect. You have to earn it and through, your, through your play, and it has to be consistent in the way you do it. I, I've talked about earning the respect of the fans here in Columbus. I think we took some steps in that. I think people had fun. Uh, following our team and you know how passionate they were, I, 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 it's, it gives me chills to think about the uh, atmosphere at the rink. Um, it, it's such a huge boost for our guys and and for everybody, for for me personally and for the coaches and everybody around the uh, the team to to have that kind of support where people don't even sit down. They pay a lot of money for good seats and then they don't sit down the whole game. That's that's so great and and uh, I want to see that again. And I want to see that every year, and I want to see that for a regular season game. I want to see that for the season opener. I want to see that for the four, you know, 40th home game of the regular season, and then I want to see it in the playoffs. And then, then uh, you know, we're, it's it's awesome to see. And and um, you know, I've always said that this is a great sports city because of the the tradition and with football and everything. And we have to earn their respect to make this a great hockey city. I think we're well on our way probably have some work to do with that but um, I think it was just an awesome experience and we're just getting started so you, know, you think you carved a bigger ditch everybody was aware what the hell was going on down here yeah we're just getting started I mean we didn't even get halfway uh, but but it was a lot of fun so imagine how much fun it'll be when we go four rounds uh, you mentioned the draft earlier and, and potentially adding some picks um, how confident are you that you can add those picks beforehand? Is that something you want to do? And, and as you look forward to this offseason, we don't know what's going to happen with the free agents, but this could be looked at as a challenge, right? I mean, how much are you looking forward to just doing your job this offseason? Like, even more than, you know. I'm in my dream job, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I love my job, and, and it's a challenge, and I'll take it, at, take it one day at a time. And, and I'm the eternal optimist, so I think we're going to do just fine. And, I said it many times that we uh, took this chance with draft picks because we have so many good players in our system as, as prospects. And uh, you know, a lot of times you have draft picks that, and then they're then they become prospects. But you know, from their first to second year as a pro, that they're never going to reach the NHL, or at least that's your assessment. Sometimes guys will prove you wrong, and that's a great problem to have. That that you think that you when you. Uh, um, evaluate a player that you drafted, you evaluate him in junior or college or, or Europe, and you go see him again and again and again, and it's like, I don't think he's going to play in the NHL. You might not end up signing the guy. A lot of times you don't even sign the guys that you draft. Um, but to have guys, so many guys in our system that we drafted and are our prospects who we believe will play in the NHL, not only play in the NHL, but be good players in the NHL, that's the luxury that allowed us to make these trades, to give up some draft picks and some good prospects because we felt that we kept the best ones. So, um, you know, we're, we're excited. And if we have to go through a draft uh, with not so many picks, so be it. It was one experienced hockey guy that I talked to uh, at the GM meetings and and he was uh, first commenting, oh, you guys took, took a pretty big risk. And I said, yeah. And then he said, well, you know, uh, in my years with this organization, we went three years and we didn't get one player from the draft. And I said, well, there you go. There you go. It's not set in stone that, that those picks are going to turn into players. With our scouts, they probably would. Um, I'm confident in our, in our scouting staff. But, but it's not uh, every, every best scout in this league that you want to name, your, who are the best amateur scouts. They've had a lot of busts. And that's just the nature of the draft. If you have two, if you have two players come out of seven rounds, that's a really good result. Just, you know, you can all do the math. 
two divided by seven, what the percentage is. It's not that high. It's if you if you go three, it's it's unbelievable. If you go four, now you're like off the charts. So two is a good result. A lot of times it's one or zero. So it's draft picks are valuable, yes, but at the same time they're just an opportunity to try to pick a good player who could become. Unless you get an impact player from the draft, you can get average players from waivers. You can get NHL players from waivers. Impact players are not usually available un unless you draft. Why wouldn't you want to have draft picks? But, but what I'm trying to say is that impact players don't usually come outside of the top 10 and the probability of them becoming impact players go significantly down after the top 10. Kind of back to what Clay was talking about, just with the, the buzz in the city. And I know you, this, you probably have other departments in the organization that do this, but Cole Sherwood was such a neat thing. And just in your time here, have you noticed just being a playoff team, just like the buzz with youth hockey? Like I know like my kid wants to be a hockey player because of you guys now. And have you seen like the spike or heard stories like that of what that does? Yeah, and we deal with the, with the people that do a great job. Eddie Ginger has done a great job with our, our guys in August when we can't have the, uh, our coaching staff on the ice with our players. He does, he's done a great job with the program here. You know, they've won turn international tournaments. Guy, guys are getting drafted in the first round to the NHL, and, and, and it's awesome. It's great to see. I think it's becoming stronger and stronger, and, and uh, you know, if we can have guys that are born and raised both for hockey and life in Columbus on our roster, that's awesome. Unfortunately, that doesn't always happen. Where in the NHL, you have to go through the draft to get them, and, and uh, Good players get drafted elsewhere, even when they're born and raised in Columbus. It doesn't doesn't give us any advantage to get them. But um, you know, we're always looking for for a homegrown talent. We're well aware of what's going on here in the in the uh, grassroots level, and and uh, follow it and support it. I was wondering about uh, the guys you got over from the Sens, Duchesne today. Like really seemed sincere and how much he loved it here he talked about the culture he talked about the guys in the room like he really gave us a feel he wanted to be here and you kind of said it about Dezingle as well like right out of the gates when when he came over so I wonder if you had more on on those two guys well I mean we had we had our conversations and and like I said before I, I don't really want to get into the uh, private conversations with them and they they were both good pros for us both were good teammates and, um, and um, you know, we'll see where it goes. Along those same lines, Yarmo, um, you made the comment that you wanted players who wanted to be here. Can you explain a little bit more about what you mean? Um, you, are you players that want to play for this management, who want to be in Columbus, Ohio, want to be in this organization, what, what do you mean? Definitely not players that want to play for the management. I don't think that that needs to be any part of it. I mean, uh, it's the logo that you play for and and the team. The mostly you play for the guys in the room. That that to me is, is always the biggest part of the players playing for each other. But we want guys that are proud to be uh, Blue Jackets. Guys that uh, want to live in Columbus, want to raise their families in Columbus, are proud to be Blue Jackets. Proud to be uh, living in Columbus, Ohio. And if, if that's the reason why you want to play somewhere else, then go play somewhere else. I mean, it's not, like I said in the beginning of the, of the presser here, that it's not about money. These decisions are not about money. And we're competitive enough and we have enough on, on our budget to pay anybody whatever they're worth in the marketplace. It's never been about money. Our ownership has been great and supportive of any, any of those decisions we ever had to make. It's not about money. But if it's not about if if it's about not wanting to play for the Blue Jackets and not wanting to live in Columbus, Ohio, then there's nothing we can do about that. This team is the Columbus Blue Jackets. We're located in Columbus, Ohio. I happen to love it, and I hope that the guys that are in that room do too. And if they don't, and they have a choice to go somewhere else, then good luck. And and no hard feelings. Go play somewhere else then. On that note, thank you. <laughs>